Hello, my friends. Um, I wanted to come back and just bring in a little bit of a um, explanation, a little bit uh, describing more about Saturn, because I feel like, especially in past videos, I've made Saturn to sound uh, horrible or a, a lot of drudgery, and it could be. <laughs> But I want to show people that there is another side of that. So really quickly, I just want to talk about why we have Saturn in places. And people can disagree. This is just what I have found through uh, my study of these planets. Saturn is a task uh, master where we don't like to be you know, having to face these things, this red tape, this, uh, this hard work that has to happen, this um, getting us out of our comfort zone to do something annoying or, uh, you know, sort of maybe drudgery or like something that isn't fun. Okay, so we all understand that. But like, <clears throat> especially right now, let's say, with this full moon coming up in uh, Aquarius on Friday, we could say, yeah, great, it's a full moon. And for me, let's say a Libra rising, where does that fall? Well, the full moon will be in my fifth house of um, that's a place of Venus. It's a uh, recreation, fun, pleasure, <clears throat> romance, sex. It could be all those things. Possibly children. Um, these are the themes of that house. It's like the area of fun. Um, so you're thinking, oh, great, full moon there. Great, fun. Yes, but Saturn is also there and has been in that house um, because Saturn entered Aquarius last uh, December. So wherever Saturn is, in Aquarius in your chart so if you are um, you know if you are a uh, let's just stop where it is in my chart in the fifth um, you could say that has been locked down or feeling discouraged or problems going forward or blocking or walls or some kind of um, obstruction or constriction or restrictions not allowing you to do what you want so in that house it would be fun um, or you know being it, it also has this idea so that's the part that everyone thinks you know they're like oh yeah Saturn in that place oh it's like you know limiting fun or recreation it is also doing its Saturn thing to show us like we have to get serious about fun. How do you, you have to become more responsible, more um, taking on more responsibility and focus and uh, uh, not control, but uh, giving shape to and form and foundation to this area. Um, so what is it that you need to do to work on that foundation, to work on that, um, all the other stuff to strengthen that area so you can have that enjoyment down the road because Saturn will impose these limits or these tests maybe but then after you go through that you will have the reward so for me in the fifth house let's say I that's my area of fun what do I do for fun I go to the ocean and I want to spend all of my time in the water on the water snorkeling with my GoPro I want to be on boats all the time helping animals like cleaning up seaweed anything I'm doing my videos also um, I want to do these educational more like document documentary type videos about animals about people um, but focused on I, I just love being out on the water in the water outdoors that kind of thing my, my fun is not drinking going out uh, going to I don't watch movies. I, I don't do any of that. I don't do any normal things Maybe a small Friendly get-together with like a dinner party like that's fun to me. That's like wow great night But mostly my idea of fun is the outdoors the ocean Okay, so what is blocking me from enjoying that? Well many things um, the, the reality is see because as Saturn, you know, this is interesting as Saturn really moved into that fifth house for me when he solidly moved in to Aquarius the end of December 2020. It was like now we're going to get real. Let's get real and let's get serious about fun for you. And for me, that was like, I want to make this a business. I want to um, I, I want to be able to. Uh, 
um, have some type of credentials in this area. How do I do that? Well, maybe if you start practicing your drone more and you're really great at it and you can, you know, um, be someone that, that someone could count on to be out on a boat with the drone. So if I get better at the drone, I could be hired to be maybe with a tour company, maybe looking for um, sharks or dolphins or whatever. Or like, why don't you get certified in CPR? That would be a skill, something tangible and solid that Saturn likes to propel you, no pun intended, like into the, the realm that you want to be at more, which is on the water or on boats or snorkeling. So, you know, th these tangible, hard facts. So to make the dream the reality, Saturn is like, you have to do this. You need to get the permits, you need, or do you have a boat? Maybe you have to link up with these people. It's the Saturn stuff. We were like, oh my God, it's so much. <laughs> and it is, it is. It has stopped me in the past because I'm like, I was gonna get a boat and Airbnb it and you know, moor it off of right here and it's gonna be amazing. I, then eventually I was like, here's all the reasons why that is not happening. So Saturn will place these blocks, these limitations in your way and it's very annoying. But eventually you start to say, okay, I'm glad I didn't do that because it was a stupid idea. And um, I worked with the Saturn there. I didn't just say, oh, you know what? I don't care, I'm gonna do this anyways. It's gonna work out. Saturn doesn't like that. Saturn is like, no, read the fine print. Is this a good idea? What about, you know, have you done your research? Because look at this, look at these people who did this. You could do this in Key West, but you're not there. Like after months of research, I was like, this isn't gonna work. And thank God I did that research. Saturn uh, and his annoyances saved me from blowing all this money, buying a boat and not knowing what I was doing. So um, the Saturn comes in to say, hey, you have these issues, why don't you look at them? And sometimes the answer is, yeah, this isn't gonna happen. This is not gonna happen. And that's okay, because then it brings you to another answer where I could say, well, I didn't do that. And you know, whatever, we can look forward now. What do, how can we get closer and closer to the goal here? And let's say the goal is the fifth house, fun recreation, your favorite thing to do being on the water, snorkeling, whatever. How can I get closer to that? I, I need to shift gears maybe. What, Saturn is pushing you to find these blocks, to, to sort it out, to figure it out. So then you can say, now I have this, and I can sit back and relax and say, I have succeeded, I have my certification, or I blah, 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 or I did this, or I have this company, whatever it is, Saturn wants to have you win in the end. But like, it's those building blocks of doing the annoying stuff. So that's what I wanted to say about Saturn being kind of uh, helpful, very helpful, and not just always like this block. It's not you trying to get around it, because if you do that, it's just going to get worse. Believe me, I know. Um, a, life t a whole lifetime of trying to do that, you know what I mean? Where you're like, I don't know. I, yeah, and then it just keeps getting more and more. So the idea of Saturn being this helpful, strict kind of teacher, it's kind of like going through a very intense, like, um, I had a dream once that was very vivid of, uh, and I absolutely know that it's real. It's not, it wasn't just a dream. It was a download from the universe here. And it was like me sitting in an audience, watching people graduate, walk across the stage, like a graduation ceremony. And each one, as they were called out, like Mary Smith, and they read off her, um, you know, like liberal arts degree or something. And everyone's like, oh, golf clap. Like, that's nice. Oh, great. Oh, great. And everyone was kind of just like, yeah, that's very nice. But then people were roaring, but but they weren't saying liberal arts. They were saying what things in their chart they had to work with in this lifetime. And they worked with it. They didn't necessarily win, but they did it. They got in there and they worked it out. They, they did the best they could, even if they failed, even if they committed suicide. This was kind of like a past, like present, like, are we alive? I don't know. It was like a, almost like at the end of the day, at the end of your lifetime, these, uh, these, um, uh, I don't want to say roadblocks, these, uh, 
tests that you have gone through in your life are being looked at as um, great deeds, whether you failed or whether you won the human game of having a lot of money or having whatever we deem as successful, it didn't matter. When these people were walking across the stage, it would be like Mary Smith, um, you know, uh, Venus in the seventh house with a, a trine from uh, Jupiter at the midheaven. And that's like, you know, pretty good. And people are like, oh, that's great. Like, you know, and there's things to work with with that. It was just like with the easy, uh, you know, aspects or, or, you know, chart placements, people were like, that's nice. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be mean to people. <laughs> But it was like, everyone has something hard in their chart. Okay, but these people, it was the example of the dream did not. And it was just like kind of a, you know, like, I don't know, a Venus in Scorpio. And it was like, oh, okay, that's kind of, you know, a different thing to, and people were like, great, great job, Mary. But then they were roaring out of their seats and everyone was like, oh my God, great job. And everyone was like standing up and cheering for anyone who would walk across and they'd be like, uh, you know, John Smith uh, graduated uh, magnum cum laude with, it's like, I don't want to be mean to people, with like something in, really hard in their chart, like <clears throat> a fixed, um, you know, I don't want to, I, I don't want to make people freaked out, like a, a lot of fixed uh, squares with, um, you know, a north node on the moon, uh, on the midheaven opposing, I don't know, Neptune and like just a lot more tangled stuff where it was like you really had to work through that. You really had to fight and get in there and like, you know, or like Saturn uh, conjunct, uh, I, I don't know, uh, Saturn conjunct chart ruler um, in the 12th opposing, I don't know, Mars or something. It, it was just like more difficult stuff. And I'm not saying if someone has that, they're like, oh my God, I'm, you know, no, because the dream was, and it was all like Saturn related stuff. The dream was when those people walked across the stage with the hard aspect, the hard charts that people were like reading off and everyone in the audience, it was like a, a triple major. Like someone was like, they majored in astrophysics with, um, you know, a minor in, uh, you know, ancient Greek philosophy and, and people were like, wow. And people were really going crazy. They, they were like, you are amazing. And I understood it then that it's, it's not if you win or lose in this sense of this human, you know, this, the humanity's idea of winning, being pretty, being rich, being successful, whatever. It's not about that. It's about how you got in and worked with it. Even if you were dealt a very difficult hand of cards, you got in there and you did it. And you could have um, said, you know what, I don't even care. I'm not even doing this. But at least you, it was showing me that these people incarnated onto the planet um, and, and decided and like looked at their, ch their chart beforehand and was like, yeah, I'm up for that. I'll take that. And people were acknowledging and applauding them for just the, the sheer willingness to go in there. It's like the person at the camp who ever, everyone's like, okay, who wants to clean the bathrooms today? And someone's like, I guess I'll do it. And it's like, wow, that person gets, it doesn't really matter the ama amazing job they did or they didn't. It's just the fact that they um, willingly accepted this task, these um, possible hardships, this hard work in this life. They could have ch chosen, no, I don't want that. I want the easy way or I want a, a nicer way or just like, you know, something I can kind of deal with. They're like, no, I'm going to take on you know, this major, triple, triple major, and I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm going to do the best I can with it. So that was this major turning point with me when I realized Saturn and the lessons of Saturn are not um, here to just be shitty because they can feel like that. And I, my chart isn't all perfect, believe me. Oh boy. Um, yeah, I could go on about that, but I won't. But like, seeing how the nature of these things come about in your life to show you these don't have to be the end of the world. They have been given to you for a reason, to make you better and to make you achieve what you want. Because it's not about what the world thinks. It's not about, oh, I got this money now or I have a you know, dream life or something. It's about what you want, your deepest desires and needs. And like to 
be able to achieve that is incredible. So Saturn isn't exactly a you know magic wand of like here you go, it's all here, but it kind of is. It's kind of like this uh, you know burled like piece of wood that you're just like I have to figure this out. But it will give you magic results when you work with it. Um, when you you don't turn away from the this is annoying part you know when i'm looking at the fifth house saturn stuff that's happening right now i can and that's not even my chart like my, my saturn's in my 10th in its fall and it's it's not fun it's um well actually it's in it's in um i have saturn in a crab i don't know if that's fall or exile what's the word for that i just know that it's not its home um, its home is Saturn in um, Aquarius or Saturn in Capricorn. That's where it's like, yay, I can function better here and I can get a lot more done. And when a planet is in a place uh, where it's like least favorite place, it's like being in your least favorite Airbnb. And you're like, I have to work here and there's like no light and there's like spiders every or whatever your idea is of like things not working or there's no Wi-Fi or something. You know, that's a planet in his um, opposite. I should really know this. I always get it mixed up. It's like either fall or exile. I can't remember. But I just look at it and I'm like, oh, Saturn is in crab. It's not uh, happy there. It's in its, uh, that's the place of the moon. It, it's just, it doesn't function that great there. It's, it's living in the moon's Airbnb, basically. And it's like, oh, yeah, I just would rather not. Um, and that I don't want to go in on that to people where they're like, oh my God, I have Venus and Scorpio, so there, does that mean everything's bad? I will talk about that at some other point in time. That's not the the point of this, but I don't want to make people worried. It's not like, you know, nothing functions. But for me, I notice, and with the way it's, it's uh, you know, Saturn is in my 10th with very close to my Mercury, which rules my sun, and it's a long story. The whole chart makes the story. It's not one placement. You can't just say, well, I have this in the 12th, I'm, I'm doomed. It's not about that. It's about the whole chart, taking it on year by year, especially to see what time lords you have perfect, uh, you have um, coming up to say this year is my annual, uh, I'm in a 12th house year right now, you know? Um, and if anyone knows what that means, it's not exactly, Again, it's the time, it's the last part of the journey of really solidifying, really getting it down to this is the crux of the matter. The whole past 12 years have led to this and you've got to figure something out here because then during, at the start of next year of your next birthday, 2022, you will be then ushered into the first house year and that's a whole different energy and it's a whole 12 year cycle starting again. So these things are building on one another. It's not like I'm in a 12th house year, it's isolated from everything. No, you're in a 12th house year and it's building from the 11th and it's going towards the first. So we really have to remember that um, none of these things are isolated. A placement, a transit, a, uh, a, a perfection, um, a uh, whatever it is, it's not isolated, um, even though it can feel that way. And believe me, I know, um, but it's, it's not here to just be that's horrible on its own. It's a whole storyline. It's a whole, uh, it's, it's life, you know, it's life. So back to the whole thing with Saturn, let me wrap, wrap this up. Oh my God, this is so long. I was like, I'll just do this, it'll be five minutes. It's now 19 minutes. The whole idea with Saturn and wrapping that up is the gifts that we get from the hard work. And I know that sounds cliched and like, oh, whatever, but it really is those problematic areas where you're just like, okay, right now Saturn is sitting for a long time in Aquarius for uh, wherever it is in your chart. And if you want to book a reading with me, I can t tell you exactly where Saturn is in your chart, like where you have it natally and where it's transiting right now. Because usually where Saturn or Mars is transiting, it has a p way of bringing up, you know, now we got to focus on this area of life, especially right now, because Saturn is in this year and to next year in this, you know, kind of uh, cage match with uh Uranus and Uranus is like let's change everything let's revolutionize everything let's let's turn the table upside down let's you know turning the tables that's a very Uranus you know uh, moment so both of those planets are kind of in this back and forth it's going to continue so whatever is happening in the place where Saturn happens to be visiting 
when I say transit, it's moving through. And it's because Saturn is big and slow, it moves through very slowly. So like Venus would move through a sign, like tomorrow she's going into uh, uh, Virgo. More on that later. So Venus will go through Virgo in like three or three weeks or something like that. She moves through a degree a day or you know something like that. It's a quick transit. Same with Mercury. Three four weeks, it's gone, and it's like it might be sitting in that house. So Venus into Virgo. Virgo is my twelfth. Now Venus is going into my twelfth house. Interesting. During my twelfth house year. Hmm. Okay. Um, and Virgo is ruled by Mercury, and my Time Lord this year is Mercury. Okay. Hmm. That seems interesting. And more on that at a, a different time. But so Venus's travel through the twelfth house, of my twelfth house, will only be about under a month. So it's like okay, we're in this season, but then it's gone. Or like the moon moves through two and a half days and you're like this was uncomfortable I don't like the moon here but it's gone two and a half days it's gone or if it's right over your Saturn that's a day maybe you know the bigger planets like Saturn Uranus um, even Jupiter takes about a year they move through something but they're there for a long time and you're getting the full dose of like every day for a year or for three years or with Pluto I don't know how long it's like I should know this. Um, I'm really bad with like remembering the, the, the memorizing that. I think it's like over 10 years or something. I should know this, but you know, Pluto takes a very long time to go through. So that is not just a season, that is a generation. You know, Pluto is a generation. A lot of people in your generation, you know, unless they were born right on the cusp and you know, you were born on the other side of the cusp of something else, you're, you're all basically grouped by your Plutos are in the same place, the same sign. Um, but these planets that move slowly have kind of a more profound lesson to show us. And I'm not saying that the, slow, the quicker moving planets cannot be profound. They absolutely can be, especially if they're in a very close, um, if they're meeting with a, a planet of yours that is very important or a point, like an angle on, in your chart. So to sum everything up, don't shy away from the Saturn because that work is giving you, it, it is not a magic wand where you pick it up today and you're like, tomorrow, done. It's more like I pick it up today and I'm gonna be working with this for three years, but it's gonna be done and it's gonna be good and I'm going to get the gifts of it at some point. And throughout the, the work of it, you are getting more and more gifts than just the goal. The goal might be, I wanna get my certification, I wanna be working on the water, I wanna form this tour company or something. But during the process of achieving that tangible goal, you are achieving so much more inside and so much more internal strength and metal that you can use then for, for the rest of your life. It is a, you know, uh, identity building, a strengthening process that doesn't just give you the goal at the end. It gives you um, the, the, the knowing that you are strong, that you are capable, and that you are not going to be stopped by you know, um, these problems. And, um, or it's going to show you how you work best with uh, you know, combating things like this. It's, it's not exactly a picnic, but it, 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 will be, um, it will be giving you that gift throughout the process and at the end. So that's what I wanted to say here. I, I just wanted to keep that in mind because when we're going into this full moon on um, Friday, um, most people, it's Friday, um, in Aquarius, it's not just a full moon in Aquarius, it's sitting very close to where Saturn is right now in his travel through the sign of Aquarius. So this moon is really an emotional kind of moment of like, here we are taking stock, what do you think? Do you think you're ready? Do you think you have done enough work? Are you ready to achieve your goal? Not really, you know what I mean? I, I can say that for me and I can say that for everyone. I just, I, we all have, if it's in your fourth house of home and family, are you trying to buy a house? Is your house working out? Is your home, mm, relations in your home the way you want it to be? Is your, um, do you even have a family? Maybe you're like, 
I want to start a family and I can't quite do it. Saturn will be there in your fourth house to say, there is a problem here, or you're building a house and we have to get down to the nitty gritty of something to figure something out in order for the dream or the goal to take shape. So, I mean, I could go throughout all the houses, but it's already been 26 minutes. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna just leave it there. I mean, you could go through all, all the houses and see the first house of self, of identity. Who are you? What do you put out into the world? What you perceive yourself as, or your body or appearance? Is it what it, it wants? Do you want it that way? Saturn is pushing you to do more, to chisel out that that truth that is uh, real, that you want to get to. You know what I mean? Or somehow achieve. Um, Saturn is really about achievement, climbing to get there. The second house, are your finances or assets like how you want them to be? What do you have to do in a Saturn way to get there? Third house, communication, siblings, neighborhood, neighbors. Is that working the way you want? Do you want it to be something else? Um, do you have to put in more hard work to achieve some kind of thing there? Um, we did, just did fourth house of home and family. Fifth house, fun, recreation, or sex, you know, pleasure could be with children also. Sixth house, health, healing, hard work or service, labor that you, you put out into the world to do good charity. Um, is that how you want it to be? Is it what needs to change? Um, seventh house, relationships, your significant other, business partnership. Is that what needs to change there? Is that really good? Or what do you want it to be? What do you need to do? Eighth house, other people's money, spouses, money, taxes, money coming from inheritances, wills, power plays with other people, um, sometimes with money, but sometimes just with this idea of holding power. How is that working out? Is that okay? Is, does it need to change? Does it need to be solidified in some better way? Um, the ninth house, your spirituality, religion, teachers or higher learning, possibly foreign travel, um, your belief system in the world, how you see the world ethics, is that good? Is that working out? What, what needs to change there for you to achieve your doctorate or whatever it is in that ninth house? Saturn is there saying you have to do these things. Tenth house, career and public standing. What do you want to be? I want to be this person who's interviewed on you know, CNN and every platform and everyone knows me as this. This is who my personal outward, you know, um, you know, th this idea of achievement, of um, career, of public standing. Who do I want to be? Do, what do I need to get there um, in order to be that person? Because I'm this person right now or my business isn't really the way I want it to be. I want it to be this, you know, 11th house, friends, groups, community. Um, seen like what do you who do you relate to what do you think of yourself as like oh I'm one of them I'm like a young parent or oh I'm a vegan or I'm an animal rights activist or I'm a um, I don't know a, uh, a backpacker or whatever group that you really feel uh, I'm a photographer um, something that I don't know something that you assimilate with a group of people that you know are your people um, what is wrong there like Saturn is like saying do you want this to become something more you know in order to you know solidify that what what needs to happen um, and then the twelfth house, your psyche or your, your you know your psychological underpinnings, your um, deep psychological um, memories, needs, things that you've warehoused away, things that you don't do or you don't go towards anymore because it's easier to put it somewhere where you're not opening it up, like therapy, maybe mental health issues, you know retreats away from the world, taking time to be away from the day to day life. That area. What is what is Saturn doing there? It's taking, telling you to take responsibility for something in that area in order to win whatever it is you want to win, you know, in that area. So um, that was just really basic off the top of my head, but like, it's a lot. Yeah. So I just wanted to clear that up because I don't want people going throughout, you know, seeing something I, I put up on YouTube or whatever and saying, oh, yeah, Saturn's, you know, Saturn sucks. Everything's bad about it. it's not. It's the hard work we have to do in order to turn that heavy 
stone into a magic wand and it will help us um it's it's we have to respect the saturn work uh, just like that dream of those people graduating across the um this graduation stage of life and they were like really applauded for taking on the hard work that is what we have to remember going forward some people have an easier way of things in some way other people have chosen to take on more and um that's all I have to say right now, and I will leave it at that, and I will come back later with some more um, insight into these things. Uh, thank you.